Amen. 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 Sorry, I didn't notice I was not on camera. Praise the Lord. Sister Sonia, it's good to see you again. It's been quite a while. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to talk about I wanted to I want to talk about um something that is um it's these are things that we know because when we say holiness it's so big it's like a big big grammar but we want to break it down what is holiness but we are, because we are in complete holiness we want to know uh how do we live a fruitful life how do we live this um, a crucified life? How do we become true Christians? I've been going through some teachings that I did some few years ago. I think I could have been distracted that we just went into big things, ignoring things like anger, things like lying, or these little, little foxes. These are things that cannot make us work with the Lord. So I'm going to take my reading from Matthew chapter 22. I'll read from verses 1 to 14. Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22. Are we there? And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a king which made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, tell them which are bidden, those that have been invited, behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fetlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it. They didn't take it seriously. And went their ways, one to his farm, or another to the merchandise. I'm going to buy my open in the shop. I'm looking for a dress, I'm looking for a shoe. Six, and the remnants took his servant and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed, and destroyed, wait a minute, sorry. Um, but when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they, they which were bidden were not worthy. Go here, therefore, into the highways, and as many as you shall find, bid to the marriage. So those who, those, so those servants went out in the highways, gathered together, all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was finished with guests. When the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment, and he said unto him, friend. How comest thou in he that not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away, cast him into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. That's our topic. Many are called. Why is it many are called? But everybody today is claiming, God called me. God called me. Because when God called you, we're not there. So we're not going to verify whether it's truly God. We can only measure your gospel must not be different from the, from the gospel the apostle, apostles taught what is in the Bible. Why are we digressing for many? In, in only this chapter, those 14 verses, there are like six, they can get six, seven preachings from there. There are a lot, of, it's very loaded with a lot of, there are a lot of revelations there. But I just want to concentrate on this. Uh, 
Many are called. I'll give you a brief history of what um, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king. When say a certain king, it's God, it's the big thing God. The marriage we are talking about is the marriage of our Lord Jesus Christ, the marriage supper of the Lamb of God. It's not marriage is like ah, uh, it's when you say marriage, it's it's like uh, as the bride of Christ, it a, a bride denotes purity and devotion. Nobody wants to marry a woman who is looking, looking, looking everywhere, looking everywhere. So Christ, when we want to be begotten of Christ, once we become Christian, we become a bride of Christ. So he is a very jealous bride. He, he does not want, he does not want you and me. When as Christians, we are both female in terms of the bride. <clears throat> when you read in the Bible, say that. that we have got all these things that are happening in the church today. Many are called, few are chosen. So it depicts of a king who is God, the marriage supper of the son is the Lord Jesus Christ. The marriage, this is the rapture where the church will be raptured for the seven year period, which will be, um, the marriage is almost is seven years after which the Lord will return to the planet Earth. So initially, the Lord Jesus Christ was sent to come to the Jews. Why the Jews? The Jews were the ones who were given the prophecy of his coming. This doctrine of, of all those prophets, they were all Jewish prophets that were given this uh, revelation. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming, and to us the son is born. These were all Jews because they were chosen as a royal priesthood. They were chosen as a nation. Before, when you, when you um, ask Israel as a nation, say, who is your king? They will say, God. When you say, I want to see the church, all of them will come. That's how they were. So they started seeing people, uh, we are going to United Nations, who is going to represent us. So uh, they all said, oh God, also, we also want a king. So in way, Prophet Eli, uh, Prophet Samuel, Prophet Samuel was, um, he said these people, they, because these sons were not very um, courageous or brave. So he said, it's not you they've rejected. They wanted a king and God gave them. It's not what we're talking about. We're just talking about basically, we're talking about many are called, but I'm just giving um, why the Lord will say many are chosen. He said, the Jews to which he had come, because these are the people that are waiting, they're still waiting for the Messiah. There are several, um, about 120 qualities which uh, must be met when the Messiah is to come. So no man, no human being has ever met. All the human beings that probably came close to it, they managed 10 out of 100 something. So you can see it's only the description can only be about the Lord Jesus Christ. So they rejected. So he said, now just go out and call whoever is ready. This is how the gospel came to the Gentiles, where Apostle Paul was called. When he was going on his way to Damascus to torment Christians, fell on the horse, said, I'm going to send you. He was blind for about three days. The Lord restored him through one of his servants, he went, the, that's how the gospel went to the Gentiles. We are the Gentiles. And now that's where we are coming. Why do we have a lot of people? We have got very few Jews in, who are Christians because they, are still, they still use the Torah, the Old Testament. So he said, go here therefore, number verse nine, go here therefore in the highways and as many as you shall find, bid them to come. Let them come. So those servants, especially pastors, we are not discreet. We just come. You want to be a Christian? Yeah, come. You want to be a Christian? Come. 
We don't tell anybody the nitty gritties. When you come into Christ, you are waging, you have declared a war against the devil. He will come after you. He will come after you. So we need to tell somebody, ah, you converted somebody. These are half converted Christians, which is why we're for the problem today in the church. Many are called, few are chosen. Why is that many are being called and few are being chosen? It is because the way we live our life, the way we live our, our lives, our Christian life. Are we living a fruitful Christian, a crucified life? That's where we want to dwell a little bit on because it's very important. Why as Christians, it is okay to call ourselves a Christian, but Christian is an identity. Christian is an identity. An identity means you have got particular qualities. Particular, if you call, if you call me, I'm a doctor. If I'm as a medical doctor, I will tell you, okay, this is what I must do. These are the qualities that I must have. If you call me an engineer, I know what qualities they must have. If you call me a teacher, there must be qualities that you must have. So being a Christian, why is that many are called? Why are many being called, not, not called those few? Because many, Apostle Paul said something that really, um, I will always quote it from time to time. It's really discouraging for many well-meaning Christians that are in churches, Romans 10, verse 1 and 2. 1, 2, and 3. Brethren, my heart's desire and the prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a seal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. We see a problem how things start in the church now. Why many are being called? He said, I pray that they are being, I, I pray that they be saved. Because although they've got the zeal of God, they are worshiping, they've, their zeal is not with knowledge. They've got their own form of righteousness. The same thing which happened in the garden. When Adam and Eve fell, they saw, they, they saw some um, fig leaves and just covered themselves because they thought they were naked. But God said, remove those things. It was self-righteousness. We have got what you call the imputed righteousness. Once you become a Christian, there is this righteousness that Christ gives you. There is the one that be a holy, the one that we work ourselves now. If you are truly converted, where you wanted to lie, where you wanted to Ah, let me just smoke small. Let me just drink small. Let me just do, let me just keep beer in the house. Maybe a visitor will come. Those things you find they have no place in your life again. This is the imputed righteousness. That watching television, those things, small, small things that you're still doing. Ah, let me watch this song. Let me watch this African movie. Let me, those are things. As you look, chapter 15, verse, verse 8, the woman in the lost coin. When the Lord comes, uh, Sister Lucy wants to come in, praise the Lord. Um, when, the, when the Lord, when the, when the Lord Jesus Christ um, comes into your life, he is the light. He does not remove dirty in your life. He only shows you, like, if you lose a coin now, when you, when you put on the light, when you put the light, the coin, the light does not find the coin. You then search for it. Ah, where did it fall? You go under the table, in the, under the table, under the carpet, you search. This is how the light of Christ does. When the light of Christ comes upon us, what it does is it shows us the areas which we must perfect, areas which we must live in total obedience to the Lord. Why then do we have few that are going to make it? Yet churches are full of people. 
many of them are sacrificing so much into the church of God. If they are sacrificing so much, why then as servants of God, as ministers of God, come and take the resources from brethren when we know they are not going to make it at the end of the day? That's a million dollar question. Why many are being called, but few are being chosen? I will give you an example. There is a position which was uh, advertised. Um, okay, let, let me give the real example. I formerly, I was a head of department. We advertised um, one uh, position, head of uh, fusion and computer department. So we had quite a lot of people who, we wanted one person actually, but we had overwhelming response. What criteria do we have to use to look for the best candidate? That's when we distinguish ourselves. I'm just giving this as an example to know if we are looking, let's say for a maid, a house help. Maid, I think it's too strong a word. We are looking for a house help. Are you just going to take somebody that you don't know? Or say, ah, this is my niece. I lived with her. She grew up practically in my, in my house. So if you are going to take my niece, you are going to take her on the basis that I know that I have known her. If it is some, so there are many small, small things that you start to look at. This is where we come in. Many are called, few are chosen. What are these little things that will disqualify us to come to this? Very few people to be chosen. Yet churches are being filled up. I heard uh, some 30 minutes ago, is it Pastor Benny Hinn? He was talking and said, uh, I, I will never ask for money again from anybody. I was quite surprised. I said, is it Pastor Benny Hinn? He said, yeah, I will not ask you for money. I will not ask for this. He said, it's really, it's really, it was grieving him in the spirit. I said, thank God he has been touched. He said, I will not ask for money. We are called to preach the word, not the money. People are having six, seven offerings in the church. People are not foolish. They will just go and change 20 pounds into two pounds, two pounds, two pounds, two pounds. Then it will still come down to the same, same amount of money. So why bother yourself? If brethren are touched, if they could give 100, they will give 100. You don't make more money by giving 16 offerings. Offering must be one. One offering is done, is finished. Many are called, few are chosen. Many are not being called because they are not living a crucified life. Christians have been quick, too quick to, when they get into situations, they've been too quick to give spiritual relevance to, um, I, I think they've been too quick to give spiritual relevance to every difficult situation. Persecution will come, trials will come. But these things, they don't transform your soul. They can suddenly, they, they make you unhappy. They teach you. But they cannot transform your, your soul. What does transform your soul? It wouldn't change your soul. Because even the, the heavens, the people without Christ in the world are still going through those situations. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10. Always caring, caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus Christ may also be manifested in our body. We need, when you say every day you wake up because you are living. So if you are caring about in the body the dying of the Lord, you know what it means. You become a candidate for the, you are distinguishing yourself. You are consecrating yourself for the purposes of holiness. 
for the purposes of being used by the Lord as a worthy vessel. There is no way that you can wake up and say, you are not living a holy life. It's like prayer and holiness is two things. It's just one and the same thing. You cannot be prayerful without being holy. You cannot be holy without being prayerful. It's one thing. Either you've got one, but it's like a coin. It has got a head and a tail. You must have both. It's not either or this one. If you become in holiness without prayerful, the demons will attack you and you still live a, a life that is not pleasing unto the Lord. Brethren, there is a danger. I do not want us as Christians to be used as a highway, as a signpost. This is the way to heaven. What about you that is there? We cannot come and live a life where we just come warm up the benches. There are some people are in prostitution. They are busy enjoying in the world, drinking, going for discotheque, all those nonsense. We are here. What difference is it going to make in our life? Are we going to make a difference in our life? Because if we don't live a crucified life, we'll be among the many, but not among the few that will be chosen. We really, really need to, uh, to live this. I'm trying to, to, to think of a, a good word to, to use. We really need to use, uh, to live a consecrated life, a life that is only dedicated unto the Lord. The coming of the Lord is at hand. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, it says, that I may know him, the power and the power of resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. As long as if you want to be among the few that will be chosen, you must be conformed to his death. To his death. That I may know him and the power of resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, the persecution. When you watch the video where the Lord went to the cross, oh, it was very painful. Yesterday I was given a revelation by the Lord of many, some, many things the Lord was just showing me. I said, I wanted to ask a question. Say, Lord, there's a question I wanted to ask a Bible question. I don't know what helped me from asking the question. I woke up still with that question. I really wanted him to answer that question. I pray that I will be given another opportunity to ask the Lord. There are many questions, there are many doctrines that are coming out there. At times, when we talk about baptism, we talked about baptism laying the foundation. When you are baptizing somebody, you are baptizing into the gospel. It is this gospel that they are going to feed on. So if you are baptized into the wrong gospel, it means you may have to redo your baptism. Acts chapter 10, verse uh, 46 or 47, 48. So baptized in the name of Jesus. That's why when you talk about in the name of Jesus, that's what he talks about. His life, death, burial, and resurrection. How did he live his life? That I may know him and the power of resurrection. It's a very strong statement, brethren and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. He went on to the cross as a prostitute, lies, liar, idolatry. A lot of things were written on those things. A lot of things were, he went as the most ugliest sinner, the chief of sinners, yet he had no sin. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. He made him who knew no sin to become sin on our behalf. When you think of the sufferings of the Lord, at times I feel sorry. At times I just want to scream my to scream my skin out. Say, Lord, if we live this kind of life, I will ask again this question. As we are gathered today, do you think if the Lord suddenly comes now, if rapture happens now? Do you think we are going to make it? 
If you don't ask this question, each time you come to your senses, the Bible says, watch and pray. Not to pray and then watch. No, watch and pray. Watching is very, it's a very um, a revealing term. When you're watching somebody, you're watching for anything, any suspicious move in your life. We are walking on, on the edge of hell every day. So there is no way that we can come in and say, you know, we'll just manage. Brethren, there is a war in the heaven list. When I say a war, we are all being monitored by the satanic forces. All of us, we are being monitored. Arrows are being thrown left, right, and center. If not for the grace of God, many of us would have fallen a long time ago. We need to come back to the Lord to start living a crucified life. That I may know him. Or Romans chapter 6, verse 3. Do you not know that as many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, we are baptized into his death? We are not baptized to become Christians so that we can live our life the way that we need. If we do, we, will say, we can claim we are called. Yes, we have been called, but few are chosen. Are we going to be among the chosen? This is why we are being gathered today. We are gathering only for the purposes of God. Let us be among the few that you're going to choose. It's not everybody say, Lord, Lord, with their mouth is going to inherit the kingdom of God. Many are just, many, are, many shall be used like mop, the one that we clean, throw it away. Brethren, let that not be our portion. I had a very heavy heart. Actually, there's a, a teaching I'm still working on in terms of the flesh, our flesh, our body, how our body is condemning us. Christians, like I said, Trials, temptations, those things are going to come. The Lord, he went, on, he went to the cross. He never said a word, nothing, nothing. Like a lamb to slaughter, he went quietly. As Christians, we need to work with certain aspects of our character. Anger, covetousness, malice, big biting. The devil allows us some of these things because he needs those things to stain our garment. He will come in like this, even the smallest dot like that of a needle, the angels will watch it. Say, this one, take him away, depart. Once they say depart, a powerful force will take you away. Like I said, Christians are so quick to force a spiritual relevance into a situation because at times it makes us feel, you know, good because we want it to be meaningful. We want it to be meaningful. Everything has got a spiritual relevance. Life suddenly goes out, oh, maybe it's the devil. Maybe it's something. Every other thing, it's not everything that has got a spiritual relevance. There are things, yes, that we need to do physical. Phys things that are done are supposed to be done physically must be done physical. So the three things that I just wanted to reiterate on this short teaching. Many are called, few are chosen. We read from Matthew chapter 22. The Lord said something on verse 12. When he said, and he said unto a friend, how comest thou in ye that not having a wedding garment? There is no way that you can be a Christian without persecution. As long as you are coming in, every one of us, for us to enter into the kingdom of God, will be battered and bruised. 
the same way he went on to the cross like this, you could hardly recognize him. It is the same way that we're going to appear before him. So he sees this one coming like this. Is everything okay? Is everything super good? He said, no, you must watch yourself. One pastor met the Lord Jesus Christ and said, and was told, how is ministry, my son? Say, ministry is perfect. Say, no, I'm not in that ministry. I'm not in that ministry. The arrows, you must be feeling the arrows, which forces you to go on your knees, forces you to seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We are not promised a walk on the path, but he said, the one that watches over Israel never sleeps nor slumber. He will be with us even until the end of the age. Romans chapter 6, verse 3. Do you not know that as many of us that were baptized, we have been baptized into his death? We were baptized into the Lord's death. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life may also be manifested in our body. Is it the anger that we are still dealing with? Because if you are a dead person, these things must not manifest. As much as I'm ministering to you, I'm ministering to myself. I've been working on many aspects. Say, God, help me. I ask myself all those things. If rapture is to happen now, I'll find nobody on Zoom. I'll find nobody on Zoom. Say, where is everybody? Say, they are gone. Say, hi. You look for me in heaven. Say, ah, where is he? Where is he? Say, ah. He was left behind. Not that you are living maybe a sinful life. It could be anger, spirit of unforgiveness. All those little things, these are things that nobody sees. Our hearts are desperately wicked. So at times, we conceal it inside. I don't want to talk to this sister. I will tell her something. Why many are called few are chosen. Even if I have a difference with somebody, try to restore that person to where those differences were before. It's not easy at times. It's not by might, it's not by power, but by the spirit of God. Many once you fall out with somebody, keep them away. Hello, how are you? I'm okay. Ah, thank you. We just smile like this. But our hearts are desperately wicked. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 and 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. Test the mind. There are many people that we are just tolerating. Otherwise, we have nothing to do with them. We, are, we just tolerate them. Ah, it's my neighbor. What can I do? Say good morning, good morning. These are the little things that we cannot see. That's why we need to talk about them. It needs to be talked about. So Jesus Christ, brethren, having died to sin, having died to the old man, to the old covenant, to the old creation, he died to the old creation. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, I think. When any man being Christ, he becomes a new creation. You must be dead to yourself. Dead to sin. Dead to your old self. The old self always, each time you wake up, you say, oh, just go ahead and make your hair. You're looking like an old woman now. It still comes those things. We have seen many especially spouses can encourage you. I want you to look good. I want you to look good. Yeah, look good in those eyes. So our life is revealed in Christ. Christ died so that we can be dead to ourselves. The plan of salvation, I don't know how I put it the last 
three years to United a similar teaching. The plan of salvation was designed by, the, by God the Father. Um, yeah, it was designed by the Father. Oh, I don't know how I put it. Yeah, it was designed by the Father, willed by the Son, and revealed by the Holy Spirit. This is the, so the God that is in all this plan of salvation. So the foundation that we must really understand. This solid foundation of living a holy life. Because if we are not living a holy life, we are going to be among the many that will not be chosen. We can be called, but only few are going to enter the kingdom, kingdom of heaven. There is a standard. We did the teaching of um, righteousness as a benchmark of entry to the kingdom of heaven. When you see that righteousness, it's something that is, um, it is, it is something that we really need to maintain all the times. Seek the first of God every day. Die to our flesh. Because like I said, we are baptized into his death. If we are dead, then we must be dead to sin. If you, he said, all those who practice sin or in sin are children of the devil. Do you think, is it, is it encouraging as a Christian brethren, a holiness preacher, to be called a child of the devil? You are of the devil. Yet we are here praying, doing all we can, sacrificing hours, doing this and that. I don't want it, I don't want it to become a routine. I don't want it to become something that everyone will say, you know, I'm a Christian, I'm just going to pray. No, it must be praying and connecting to him. Connecting to the source. Otherwise, we'll be wasting our time. I did a similar teaching on, uh, many years ago. One pastor, oh, this, this kind of preaching has no, this kind of teaching or preaching has no place in this church. I said, because I told people, if you put sin, go in sin full time. Just to know why you are in hell. Say, God, I know why I'm here. Not you and me. Why should we be joining them? Those, these people have joined into open rebellion. They have chosen to fight God. And here we are sacrificing. Should all our labor be in vain? I do not, I do not want us to be amongst those that are um, called, but um, to be not among the chosen. It's a tragedy. He stopped everything. Trousers, weave, earrings, perfumes, that high heels, everything. Now we are, some people are laughing at you, say, I'm like an old woman. But in the eyes of the Lord, is oh, God sees you as a sweet 16. Somebody said, that's my daughter. Why should we be amongst the few that are going to be chosen? We need to live a holy life. We need to consecrate ourselves for the purposes of um, being used by the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the Holy Spirit does not use a contaminated vessel. Anybody who's living in sin, the Holy Spirit cannot use. You can be used, you can be used because the gifts of God are without repentance. You could be used, still speaking tongues, still see a vision. It's not about these things. Don't measure your holiness about the amount of vision, amount of tongues, amount of preaching, amount of teaching. You can teach and get, let everybody enter. You yourself should remain outside. Because it's not how you teach, how you live the life. Are you living the life you're teaching? This message of holiness, brethren, if you don't live, it can choke you. It's choking actually. The Lord is looking at us. 
is looking forward, is looking unto us. We don't evangelize. We don't go out there. We have grown big saying, you know, God, I'm too big. Let these young, young ones go in. Let the evangelists when you're going to evangelize. What about you? Every one of us is called to evangelize. It's a lame excuse. Even without a chat, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus, huh? what did you say? God loves you. He sent his only begotten son to go and pay the price for you. Engage somebody. We need to evangelize. We need to evangelize. We need to go out there. I'm going to ask us to make a two, three, four minute video when we are evangelizing. We need it. I think we've been sitting too much in our comfort zone. You know, it come, let us go out there and win souls for the Lord. If you and I believe that rapture can happen anytime soon, believe me, 2020 is a very telling year. It's a very prophetic year. We don't know what is going to happen. The Lord can decide to come today. You may not decide to come today, but if you die today, then your rapture has happened. So you're going, it is appointed upon men once to die, thereafter is judgment. That means if you and I go to sleep and don't wake up, if you don't ask yourself those questions, then we've got a challenge. If you don't ask yourself the question, say, God, is there anything the devil is holding against me? Repent. Lord, have mercy upon me. Give me the grace of repentance. Anything that the devil is holding against me, but I take it away by the power in the blood of Jesus. You go to sleep. If you don't wake up, 99% chance to say, God, by his mercies, enjoy the mercies. You may make it. You may make it. Exodus chapter 33, verse 19. I will show mercy upon whom I will show mercy. You may, you may show your mercy. There are some who thought they fought all the time in the world, brethren. They died without, you know, the sad thing about death is it just comes too sudden. The thief on the cross, that one is a lucky one. When they was chosen, it was, it just he said, ah, God, please, let me, let me, he just, he mentioned something significant. He said, today, I promise you'll be with me today in paradise. But how many of us, that was a dying thief, you are a living thief. You don't know where the next bullet is coming from. So it calls us to live a very set apart life for the Lord. Because we are the Bible's many are ready. We need to go out there. For it's many, for many are called, but few are chosen. We cannot be amongst the few if you are not living a fruitful life. If you are not living a holy life, be a holy for I am holy. We are being called into holiness. God is holy from eternity past, eternity present, eternity in the future. He is not willing to compromise, brethren. He is not willing to compromise. He is not willing to compromise. Many, I got a, I, I got a revelation, not a revelation. Um, yes, I think somebody he opened it up to me. Uh, is it revelation 20, where, where he saw the, the I'll, I'll paraphrase it. I know it's between 21, 20, and 22. He saw, I saw the great and the small standing before the judgment seat of death. I think it's, um, if you know it off head, just say, praise the Lord. I'll, I'll, I'll paraphrase it anyway. He said, I saw the great, the small, the rich, the poor, small as in children. I was asking, sir. Sorry? Revelation 2012, sir. Ah, thank you. Oh. Okay. Ah, okay. Good. Thank you. <laughs> it's right on my face. I didn't see it. 
I don't know why I'm putting on these glasses. So instead, I saw the I saw the dead small and great. Small, I said, why small? I said, why small? I was just wondering. But somebody gave me one man who was testifying. He said he was taken, he was taken from. He said he saw small children was explaining their ritual activities. He said, but um, he saw the coffins coming empty. Those were Christians. He said, but he saw coffin coming with children as well. He said, what? So it was one of those people from this satanic kingdom, the ones those in the Marian kingdom, was explaining to, to, this, to this person. He said, no. He said, uh, there, there's many, I don't know, cloning, cloning. We've got half human beings, demons, that have been being chained out. Many people you see today, oh, it's a beautiful woman, it's a good man. These are demons reproducing. They are reproducing themselves on earth. We don't know these things. That's why, especially for the young ones that are not married, it is good we pray unto the Lord. We pray to the Lord to choose a partner for us, to look for a partner for us. Don't look for yourself. You will fall. I heard of a testimony of a woman who made charms to pick one man. She was a prostitute. They met in a bar over 25 years. The woman was using a charm. The charm, they said, the charm was going to be used every nine months. She renewed the charm for 25 years. The man did about six children. Ah, oh, honey, 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 honey. So she, I think she said after 25 years, where is he going to go? So she never used, she never used um, the charm again. For three, three years, she never used it. Three, nine months, she never used it. This man just woke up, said, what are you doing here? He said, what? He chased, he chased the woman. So people said, ah, are you mad? Like my wife and I just woke up, say, hey, get out of my house. People say, hey, what is the problem? It was when the woman gave in, he said, no, I used the charm 25 years ago. Say, I know this woman is a prostitute I met 25 years ago. Now she's saying, oh, for children, I don't believe you know him from anywhere else. Because their memory, I think his memory was kept some or something. I don't really know what happened. So these are the dangers. Imagine 25 years not in the will of God. He fell because he was also not in the will of God. Those charms worked because if he was in the Lord, he could have been delivered a long time ago. So these are the dangers. We need to be amongst the few that would be chosen. The kingdom of God is not about numbers. Brethren. It's not about numbers. I just want to remind us the dangers. As many as we are, few can be chosen. We can be 100, only five will be chosen. Those that are working according to his will, those that are observing all these statutes, everything that he said, he said, if you follow my commandments, then you, I know you love me. There's no way you can, you are with Baal, you come. You come here, you come here, it's like half Christian, half um, half world. There's nothing like that. Either you are in for it, né? there's nothing like lukewarm. Either he's got to have you called. I, I was wondering why is the Lord using Satanists? They, they become much more better Christians than people who claiming to be Christians. Nothing Christian about it. It's only that we come to church, come pay our tithe soothing our confidence, but there is nothing Christian about ourselves. I mean, people are coming to church, people are calling themselves Christians. We have seen a lot of fornication in the church. Choir mistress has got two children from pastor. We've got one deacon is going out with his sister. All these things are happening in the church. How do you think the Holy Spirit can function under such circumstances? There's no way. How will the Holy Spirit function? People still say, oh, I come, this is what the, this is what the vision is. So the Lord showed me, 
ah, this is what I saw. This is what the Lord said. Yes, he can be you. He can use you. But you are not going anywhere. You still can be used and dumped because you have chosen to fall into sin yourself. And people are doing it without conscience. They say, God said, let us love one another. He never said, get into an immoral relationship. The moment you see that, you say, God, every other person, those thoughts, they come. But they're a pastor and say, oh, this young lady is the bullet. Ha. I just wish I would take a runaway, go and live in an island. Then you say, hey, heaven, heaven. If you, have make, if you have made up your mind, Job said, I have made a confidence with my eyes. I have heard people, many of them, it's only luck which is keeping them like good people. If they get a new jacket, a new shoe, oh, <laughs> the doors are open to live a sinful, a sinful life. So I just wanted us to talk up to, to to say many are being chosen, many are chosen, few are, many are called, few are chosen. So as we are baptized, we are baptized into Christ, into his death. That means the kind of life that we live. If we want to be among the few that are chosen, then you've got to live a consecrated life. A life free of sin, a life free of anger, manipulation. This is one thing that is the end of the church, manipulation. Slander, big biting, all these things they become so it's like they become a normal part of our life in the church. Did you see this one? Instead of praying, uh yeah, I saw a sister left it. Maybe I, I don't think she's a teacher, I don't think it's the child of God. That's what that's all what you can say. Say, God, I'm praying for my sister. I don't know whether I'm right or wrong. Please, if I'm if, if what I'm seeing is right, please touch my sister. Arrest her for me. Now, now we are praying for somebody. We're praying, oh, this one is not a child of God. This one is not called of God. We are called to support one another. That's why he made us a family, a family of believers. It's not coming. When God gives us knowledge, brethren, he didn't give us knowledge to come and abuse other people. He didn't, he didn't give me opportunity to, to go to school and come and say, you know, I'm the best. I'm this. Who cares about your education? There on the other side is the gospel of Jesus Christ that is being asked. You come with your title. So no, say nobody needs your title. It's a functionary that you use your name. You're not even be called pastor. Either you are known as a pastor on here and you are known as a sinner in heaven. Of what use is that to you? It is better I'm known as a Christian in heaven than to be known as a pastor, to be known as a bishop, archbishop, apostle, all those titles. It's good that people will afford you respect. There are people generally who respect titles. They give honor to whom it is true because that's what you call yourself. If I call myself president, people say, ah, good morning, Mr. President. They'll start calling you what you want. That's what you want. You are answered according to the idols in your heart. So you don't blame people. They just ask you. They don't want to, aff to offend you. If I choose to say, ah, God has promoted me. Now I am now a prophet. So, ha! Ah. You are now promoted, say yes. You are called tomorrow. You are a prophet. The next day, now I am an apostle. How many people have you changed their lives that they are being called from a, this person, from a disciple to a pastor? from a disciple to an evangelist, from a disciple to a prophet, from a disciple to a teacher. That's what we call the gift of God. It's not how much of the big, big grammar, straying people with grammar. Yes, you can impress people, but is that message touching anybody's life? Because if you are not being careful, ele eloquence and the elegance, this are, they have nothing to do with the grammar, with the message. Yo, I want to say, this. I, I just want to place somebody here. Yeah, you can you can speak with your folks down. Nobody really cares. If that message does not have holiness, if that message does not carry message of repentance, if that message does not teach about the cross of Christ, if that message does not teach about the coming judgment of God, then it's a useless. 
useless message. It's not edifying anybody. We are called to prepare the brethren. Say, now that we have been called, are you ready to be among the few that are trusted? That is the question that I'm going to leave you as to. Brethren, I don't want us to be on numbers. If we are two, let us be two that are going to make it. If we are 10, let us be 10 that are going to make it to heaven. Many are laboring. If I do not want to labor amiss. I don't want us to labor in vain. Of what you You stopped eating pork. Oh, pork is not good. But you will choose to go into a place where somebody is eating those food. I do not want us to be used as a signpost. We are not a navigator who will be telling people, say, stop, you go back, they are here, they are home. Thank you for bringing my children home. We also want to hear, thank you, my son, welcome, faithful and self, a faithful servant. That that is a hope. This is the hope that we have. Ah, this is Apostle Paul. Ah, this is Moses. Moses, I heard about you. Why did you throw those tablets out? down? Aaron, were you a goldsmith? Why did you agree to make a cow for these people? You'll be asking those questions. Remember eternity. Asking questions. Osaya, how did you feel when you married a prostitute? Asking questions. Apostle Paul, when you were tormenting these Christians, persecuting them, how were you feeling? And how did you feel when they started persecuting you? Ah, uh, okay. So, brethren, we are, 40, we are living in the blessed hope that one day you say, this is the God, the Father. This is the Holy Spirit. Remember when rapture happens, everybody's going, the Holy Spirit will go. Every one of us will be with the Father. This, this is the greatest event in heaven. The Lord is ready to receive his bride. We are not ready. It will become a scandal that he came and picked a few people here. Yet the churches are full of people. Motivating people. I just want to motivate somebody, encourage them. We are not here to encourage. We are here to rebuke. We are here to re Everything must be about building you to stand right with God. This, cause, this message we are preaching, brethren, is about death. It's about hell. It's about life and death. Hell and heaven. Because if we don't, we don't know whether we're going to have another opportunity to hear this message. If you suddenly develop heart attack, heart attack, oh God, you are gone. In the spirit field, you depart, you are already there. The first five, ten minutes, the moment you're gone, you are gone. You are gone forever. No more repentance. That's why we emphasize on repentance. So I'll give over to our moderator. I just wanted us to leave us, brethren. Let us be among the few that will be chosen. This heaven rest. He said, he who overcome, with the we must overcome. There are a lot of temptations. That's why there's need for us to pray for one another. Let us stand with one another. Let us be a family. God has brought us together. None of us is better than the other. The head is not better than the eye. The eye is not better than the ear. The ear is not better than the foot. Neither is the foot better than the stomach. So brethren, we all need one another. Look at how you can be of use to somebody's life. Edify it. Be a blessing to somebody's life. Don't be somebody just watching negative, negative. Only see, oh, I was just seeing this, especially here in Europe. I've seen men, old men, almost six years, putting one in an earring. I say, my God. Huh? Women are going into the shop, say, ah, sorry, we don't have earrings today. One man has bought it. Earring for crying out loud. Your daughter earring, you the papa earring. I don't even know what it means. Let us not compete with those people for replacing the lack of fire. We just have got to stand right with the Lord. Our leader, our moderator to lead us through uh, repentance. Let us repent as much as we can to stand right with the Lord. 
every spirit, every vile spirit in us, a spirit of anger, a spirit of unforgiveness, a spirit of backbiting, a spirit of every other thing that you think you know, brethren. Just, you don't have to shout out. Just even pray in your heart. You know what you are going through. Don't let somebody come and say, ah, this is just like this. We want to make heaven. Anything else doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Let those who have got mouth to talk, talk. Remember some, there's a picture I sent in the groups. There's a man with a long crocodile mouth like this. He said, people don't want me to go up. Yet it is their mouth of chasing the divine helpers. Talking too much. Praise the Lord. So I give you over um, to you, my beloved sister. <laughs>